Hey, Shaylee here. Before we get into the podcast, just to let you know, uh, we had a bunch of calls drop, so tried to cobble it together as much as I could to make sense, and uh, yeah, here we go. Thanks for listening. You're Near the Wild with Matt Becker and John Norris, recorded in Anchorage, Alaska. Hello? Matt Becker! That is correct, sir. <laughs> hey, you sound fantastic. Thanks, so do you, actually. Yeah. It's, I, this is tantamount to uh, dog sniffing butts when they when we connect on Skype. <laughs> I, I believe it might be No Porn Tuesday. <laughs> That's why we're getting through so clear. Wow, that, that must put... <laughs> That must be what it is. <laughs> I like it when they come up with those things. It's Thursday. You know what that means, don't you? I don't know. You get a nipple ring. I don't know. Yeah. Everyone comes I, up with that. everything is based on how someone else can gain monetarily. But it's it's like when they hang on, but they hang on to it. Like I'll see one guy goes, I know it's throwback Thursday. I don't think I've seen that in probably a year. And some guy posts something going, I thought I'd put that out there. And I'm like, it was already out there. It's gone. It's not throwback Thursday. It's, hey, you're cleaning your laptop. Or it should have been, yeah, or uh, I'm going to put that out there again. If it's throwback yeah. Thursday, then it's already happened. Yeah. Every like picture it. is a picture of you from before. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but if I could take one more. <laughs> I, I love it. People don't have any room on their phones now because they have so many pictures of themselves. How I, do I know it's your phone? Well, look, there's 900 pictures of me. I, um, yeah, I just ended up. I'm now buying um, external hard drives. Like it's it's crazy. Like no, as opposed to uh, the iCloud. Well, it, listen, we, we all know anytime anytime anything is uh, very super convenient and it's uh, in the hands of a corporation, uh, that means you really have very few rights. As, as it turns out, it's going to be it's going to be they own those pictures or they own that data. And now, how do you how do you want to pay for it? I mean, that's what it's going to be. No, oh, no. Do you see the new thing that came out? This is the greatest invention ever, and I don't know why it took so long. Uh, they have Wi-Fi that they can control up to the foot where it goes to. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's Yeah, but I mean, so you're sitting in Starbucks. You're over in the, I don't know, say the poor kid section. They can just go right to that line. Yeah, yeah. Which, I mean, I'm all for you being able to control your wireless. I mean, How people, cool would that be, though, Greg, in a restaurant, like a fancy restaurant? You put it in there, and then certain areas get it and certain don't, so it's like the old smoking section. Yeah, 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 and all yeah. of a sudden, people are like, can we move over to that table? You know, I'm like, sorry. That's only no. smoking. You'll have to start yeah. smoking. <laughs> this is our VIP section. I'm sorry. That's what it is. Philip Morris will pay for all the wireless, but they will only pay for wireless free. But they will only it, pay for the wireless in the smoking in the, sections. So that's that people fucking great. <laughs> that is not even illegal, Greg. You no, broke it. Absolutely not. Fuck the vodka, people. Yeah. Screw the plastic bottle of vodka. Call. No, no, that's Call where you, that's the, the the vodka and the uh, and the cigarette people will have a, a VIP area with a T one line. <laughs> so that's <laughs> amazing. <laughs> yeah, because and the reason we do this is you you know we feel our product might shorten their lives, so we want to make sure they get faster internet. Yeah, they should get it quicker. <laughs> they have my dear to use it. This, yeah, this is the this is the pitch. Well, hey, I'm uh, I'm drinking a lime Ricky. I um I just I, I've been trying I've been kind of in a uh, a funk on drinks mm -hmm. after hitting uh, Negroni hard and then uh, pulling back for a while right. and then staying away from gin for a little while and uh, some guys a couple of uh, Air Force guys came over to the funhouse the other night for the for the fights mm -hmm. and we were talking about gin and I think we and all of a sudden gin gin uh, gin Ricky or uh, gin fizz or something like that came up. And uh, yeah, they're good. I re reintroduced, and and the, the 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 ironic part of it is is that he found out about gin from us talking about it on the uh, on the Tin Can Rehab podcast. Okay. So we we started talking about the Tin Can Rehab, and then why he was drinking gin, and he told me why, and then all of a sudden, but uh, I know I know usually you usually have a drink or or two on uh, on Tuesdays when we record. Yes, I do. I'll do. Uh, we're into the warm part of the year up here now, so I was doing yard work early. And so I have uh, some uh, AC cold tequila and a beer to chase it with. Nice. It's called it's called sad. Redialing. You there? 
Yes, I am. <laughs> I lost you for a second. Yeah, no, that was uh, yeah, it was, we have a very clear connection, and then and then that they found out. <laughs> Like, you guys both premium Skype members? I wasn't even talking about the banking system. Yeah, I know. That was funny, actually. That really did. I listened to that one, and it was <laughs> it did fuck up right. And then once we stopped talking about it, oh, we're, bad. we're good. We're back. <laughs> and we think we're laughing, but right now there's a guy in Switzerland going, what they say? With his hand, like, finger right over a button. A, like, one those, no, like one of those sound things where it goes up and down in quality. He just slides <laughs> one slider up and down. He's got, like, ten of them. Like the old, uh, oh, remember the old it's telephone the, It's the suck fader. <laughs> he just puts the sucky <laughs> signal. <laughs> when he's not doing that, he's remixing uh, Def Punk. <laughs> yeah, hey, there's a... Uh, there's a guy who does the uh, Doug Stanhope podcast. He he uh, converts all the podcasts to uh, a YouTube file and uh, posts it. And he's going to start doing that for us too. Mm. He's, it's uh, his uh, Twitter is at easily the worst, but uh, <laughs> that's easy to remember. <laughs> but I mean, it's it's like it's come on. He he does he does everything for us like within 24 hours. It's posted, and then he said, "Hey, I got some time off." I'm like, "Fucking relax. Why do you want more computer work? Jesus, you kids." He's got an ankle bracelet, doesn't he? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, dude, I just, I can't go on porn. I agreed to that. So I'll do this. Not on porn free Tuesdays. Yeah. He's got time today. So yeah, I'm stoked about that because, uh, we'll, we'll set up a, uh, a YouTube channel and, uh, and start basically he'll, he'll start doing it. I'm not, I don't have anything to do with it. No, that's very cool. Yeah. And thank you. Yes. <laughs> Remember, we don't say thank you enough. Oh, there's a, hey, I'm going to add him to the call. Uh oh. Hello. Yeah. Did I ruin it? Yeah. Let me call you right back so I can add you to the... Oh, wait. Did... Beck, are you there? Did it work? I did it. I added him. <laughs> All right. What's <laughs> up on mine? I'm adding John now. We have six lines open ah. now. <laughs> and we can I... do live video nudity. <laughs> All right. There's no rules against that. Well... No, that's what built the internet. <laughs> it actually did build the internet. It still oh, does. It was... All the R and D military, the military and porn has run the country well, since the Civil War. The the military, they, the ARPANET is the one that, that actually that was the the precursor to uh, the internet. But the all the all the ways to uh, make money on the internet were all pioneered to the the porn industry. I mean, that, well, that's that the same. Was it. That's the same with just about every technology. Absolutely. Yeah, but heavy, heavy during World War II, heavy religious areas flooded the market with prophylactics. Why? What for real? Why did they flood the market with prophylactic? So the fucking GIs could fuck. Nope. Wrong answer. This is your weapon. This is your gun. All the latex that they were mining <laughs> from the latex no. mine. <laughs> the reason was is that they were walking in snow with long barreled rifles and they kept getting snow in them and the guns would explode because they couldn't <laughs> So you put a condom on the end of your your gun so you wouldn't get snow in it when you're going through the passes. And then when you get <laughs> to the village it? you could you can uh you can uh Use the uh, reuse the condom, right? That's how the recycling. Be weird, I know, but that's the thing. Could you imagine if you got syphilis during this time? You got <laughs> fuck. Use my last condom on my gun. <laughs> hey, your barrel's breaking out. Tell me about it. <laughs> <laughs> that's a shoot, right? I don't. I don't know if that's a real fact, but I like it. Enough that's that a fact, John. You can't facts. change the fact. If you don't believe me, look at Doug Stanhope's new book, Digging Up Mother. It's on page fifty-eight. Uh, Oh yeah, I'm uh, I'm almost done with the book. I waited till I got my hardcover to to start reading it because I, I don't it just wasn't the same reading it from a three ring binder, one single pages, you know. Yeah, kind of wanted the book feel, and and the book has the forward by Johnny Depp, and it also has the all the pictures in the middle. I have the digital version, and quite frankly, it's fantastic. But I realized something last night: digital is a lot like uh, ebooks are a lot like Vegas. You, you, you don't quit until your eyes close. <laughs> I sat there reading at seven. I, I went to bed and I went, ah, I woke up again going, I should just keep reading it. Man, my eyes hurt today. Yeah, that's, that's how the, do you, are, are you reading on your computer or your iPad? My iPad. I'm doing this thing, thing called a book. There's this stuffed paper and they, they eh. put the, uh, they, they, they have a controlled, a measured amount of ink that forms words and, uh, that's those form sentences. A, yeah. That's an inferior technology, Greg. Totally. Like, that's, totally. It's not going <laughs> It's not going to make your eyes bloodshot. It's not going to like completely fuck up your sleep cycle. Uh well, you yeah. want to you want to read it on a tiny glowing screen. Yes. 
tinier the better. <laughs> I'm reading Doug Stanhope's new book, Digging Up Mother, from a uh, from a monitor the size of the head of a pin. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> one letter at a time. <laughs> uh, I need to. I need to. I'm gonna order the Kindle version, but it looks. I can already get it used on Amazon. Yeah. Um. Actually, we're selling it now at DougStanhope.com, but I have to actually buy them from Amazon to to resell them because I, I don't have a deal with the distributor yet. You're, so you're selling used copies? I'm not no, they're not used copies. They're brand new copies. But there's uh there's a lot of people in in Europe who can't buy them, who are uh, listeners of the podcast and fans of Doug's, and I I'm buying them like like you would buy them from a distributor, so we get credit for uh for tallying up how, how many books are sold uh, pre-sale and then for the bestseller list and all that stuff. So we're, we're doing it. It's just, I, I have to increase the price. I'm, I'm just selling them at cover price, whatever it is. But, um, that's, that's one way for them to get it in the UK. Cause there's no book deal for outside of North America right now. Isn't that weird? There will he be. travels halfway around the world and does shows all over and, and they can't I don't get know, a book deal. I don't know how any of that works. You know, it just seems like, uh, you would. You know, I like, converted his whole book to Korean last night with an app, yeah. and I'm selling it there. Sure, so. yeah, yeah. <laughs> they love it. Stan Hope means viral in Korean. <laughs> viral, viral. Yes, uh, viral. look it up, John. You're selling I, it. <laughs> you're, you're only selling it on thumb drives that you can throw in a, a cheese ball across the river, <laughs> separating South what? Korea from North Korea. <laughs> Could you see little Koreans sense. running up going, "Jeez, oh, who's Stan Hope? Oh, jeez." Oh well, um, well, yeah, John. I uh, I encourage you to get to get a book. They're good. It's good. And Becker, you're in it. it. Becker, you're in it, man. Yes, I am. Uh, very. I I just finished this. There was there's two parts that I've read where you were in it, and that that was like basically where I put the book down last time. Not because I was disgusted, but that, that's oh, why I remember Becker's reading in it. it. Yeah, garbage. no, it's good because it's yeah, the I same hear- reason I quit reading the Bible. I, I hear all the stories because <laughs> Becker's in the Bible. <laughs> yeah. So I hear all the stories for years. I've known Doug and Becker for 20 years and almost 20 years. And I, I know, I know both of you individually exclusively at certain times where I've heard about the other knowing, you know, th- that these stories exist, but never, never really hearing or like seeing it in print is, uh, is interesting. Yeah, it's kind of funny because it's a timeline in which it puts it, which is Doug was Doug struggle in writing it was trying to get everything in chronological order of how it actually happened. Oh, because he you remember labored, things. he labored oh, over it, that. I a few years back, I sat down and wrote down when I was went to school, when I went to different colleges. I didn't finish, but I went there, and I had to do it, and I couldn't believe it. It was like, how did I? I mean, my timeline was screwy. Yeah. Like I, you know, Madison, I went to school for Mad- in Madison, Wisconsin for one summer and then moved to Indiana, went to school there, did this and that. And, and you just, it's weird when you put it. So John, start keeping a journal right now. <laughs> I probably. Every time I try to start a journal, I, get, I may get like four or five days and then, uh, and then I have a day where nothing really happens and then it's I off the forgot rest. my journal in the men's room again. Start over. <laughs> you know, I, uh, Lynn Shawcroft, uh, the Hedberg widow. She she contacted uh, Doug and I because she she's putting this project together for uh, to release something uh, regarding Mitch and she wanted little anecdotes on the road and she she wanted this it, it, of course it was like due yesterday so when she she got in touch with us there it had to be done within 24 hours which is typical Lynn but it was very interesting because I I had a story that I I thought was interesting of being on the road. Uh, one day getting to a gig with, uh, Rob Cantrell, Mitch and Lynn and I in the car. And I started to, I uh, told the story to Brett Erickson to just kind of flesh it out. And he goes, yeah, yeah, you should do that one. And then I tell the story to Doug and he goes, you know what? I'll punch it up. You just write down what you know. And so that was the hardest part was because I got halfway through it and I thought, I wonder if Rob's around. So I contacted Rob Cantrell and we started talking about it and I was fucking wrong about half of it. In fact, I didn't even remember the funniest part. He was a, he told me the funniest part that, that happened at the end. And then Lynn had a couple of things as well. And it was one of those things where I wasn't keeping journals at the time, which, you know, too bad, but, uh, it, it, but that's your perception of history at best. It's going to be a collaborative to actually get it right, to get it closer to right. 
So you try to tell them the story, and everybody's like, "Thanks, Greg. That's uh, that sort of happened. Thanks for the input. no. It's like, oh yeah, yeah, that was cool. But then remember when this happened? I'm like, no, fuck, I absolutely yeah. Now, <laughs> yes, now, and that's, that's really good. That's the funniest part of the whole fucking thing. Yeah, Greg, and- you just described the movie Big starring Tom Hanks. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> that's great yeah uh no i think journals are super useful and i have i i, I have 10 of them at least i have at least 10 floating around oh, i've got including it. including just like the notes on my phone I, so someday I, I'll, someday i'll die and it'll be somebody's job to go my go through all of my notes and consolidate or to like put them in a big pile and then put kerosene on it or yeah just throw them in the fire with this my body. guy was sick I, I started keeping journals when I started touring with Doug because I was keeping track of the venues and kind of, kind of more of an accounting thing of like what the venue was like if the fucking bar owner or the, the manager or the producer was a, a, a douchebag or whatever. But then I would also keep track of hotels and things that would happen. And, and that I found that very useful. And I, no, I, see, I, I go back see, to that. I, I've seen you do that kind of thing and it is good because you know, if the seating's right, everything, and you keep – see, I tried doing it like you do it, but I have ADD so bad yeah. that I started just digressing going, man, these ch- chicken strips are dry. <laughs> so I have – and then I forgot to say where I was at. Sometimes that's the, <laughs> mo- sometimes that's the most interesting part about a gig. <laughs> the chicken strips are to be avoided. <laughs> Ooh, what's the deal? How old is this mayo? <laughs> oh, note to self, get a new pin. This thing's going bad. <laughs> I don't know what the, the 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 Mitch Hedberg project is, but uh, yeah. once I find out about it, I'll I'll definitely let you guys know. We'll, we'll uh, announce it and put a link on the on the website. How do you how do you keep your journal, Greg? Do you just have like an actual like book, or do you type it into your phone or what? No, no, never on the phone. That's the worst way. I think the cloud. Right. They'll own it. Someone else will own it. No, yeah. I, I like the, I, I like I like writing things down. I like being able to go back and and read. Uh, like through a book and then the book, I keep the book together and that's a tour book. I buy, I buy the books. They're like these stupid, like, uh, like third grade, you know, girl diaries from the dollar store. And it, mm-hmm. it's, it's, it's bright and it, it's like pink and black leopard print. But it, I mean, those things that stands out. If someone sees that book laying around, they know it's my book. So I keep, I keep them in there and then they're only a dollar. So I use one for an entire tour and then date it and then put it in a, a box and, review it if i need to go back to it yeah that's the way to go i'm stupid so i always get like the 12 dollar like small black like fancy notebook from barnes and noble a moleskin and yeah and then it's like it's it's small and black and then i lose it in like five days yeah but i gotta tell you man when when you need some info some some actual recollections of things that were going down that that helps like you know especially with doug we we go back to the same venues two or three times since I've been with him. And uh, it's good to know if that fucking sound guy is still there or that really good sound guy is still there. It's good to be able to walk in there and kind of have a, an idea. And if the chicken strips are bad. Yeah, so, and, and, and you know what I've hooked on now lately is I've been doing a ton of writing on stuff. And what I've been using is that Hank Writer, that app that makes it look like a, uh, what is it, a, uh, a typewriter. Oh, really? Hank. Yeah, it's Hank. like a typewriter. Hank, Hank, uh, What's the name of the actor? Hank, Hank, uh, Hank Hill? Hank, uh, Tom Hank Hanks. Williams. Tom Hank, Hanks. Tom Hanks. See that? Tom Hanks that's, has, that's, Tom Hanks has an app. Redialing. Hello? All right, there's Becker. Mm-hmm. And I'm here. There you are. All right. I think we had a couple of lines open there. Yeah, no, I think she's, I was saying that the other day. We have to call on the group one because yeah. I got originally Greg and then it came in as John. And then, so I think we had three lines going, but I have, I have no idea how Skype works. So like it's you magic. guys are the, you're the only people I talk to on Skype every week when I log in the once a week I log in to talk to you guys. I always have like three or four new, uh, like Skype requests from yeah. people with like the fakest fucking names you've ever heard. Trannies from mm-hmm. the Philippines. D- Dolt Lantana is a new one that I just got. Yo, oh, you accepted it though, right? Oh yeah, totally. Oh yeah. I mean, great. Right? We play uh, Word with Friends on there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, John, I, I, I was gonna tell both of you, but I uh, leaked it to to uh, Becker earlier. Uh, there's a guy who's actually gonna put our uh, podcast on a, a YouTube channel for 
near the wild, and he's going to convert this to a YouTube file. Uh, you know, I could do that. That would take me like five but minutes. John, why he wants to do it, and he and he has motivation. Well, I didn't know that was a thing people even did. Yeah, it is. It's great. So I'm trying to I'm trying to say thank you to him. Okay. Yeah. At, no. It's... At easily the worst. <laughs> hey, at easily the worst. Don't fuck this up. I'm watching. <laughs> <laughs> John's sort of watching. He's threatening I'm to actually really, watch. I'm not really watching. No I'm one, no watching one thinks you're watching, John. <laughs> He's too busy skyping with trans. Tran, I know. Tran. Me and Dolt Montana have a real, we have a really good conversation going on. Otherwise, I'd be on YouTube checking that out. So before we uh, got people, go ahead. Wait, I like uh, people actually put their podcasts on YouTube. Oh yeah, John. Oh. John, come on. Have you seen what's floating around on YouTube? Well, yeah, I know there's a lot. There's, I mean, I'll watch blackhead popping videos all day. Yeah. But I didn't know. I don't, what's the point of that? Is that for like people who, people who do, not, work? people who do not want to, uh, subscribe to iTunes or download okay. iTunes? Uh, well, just ways yeah. for people to actually listen, listen to the podcast without having to actually go through, uh, regular channels or an app. Uh, if they don't want to do an app or they don't have a, uh, cell phone like our friend Matt Becker. All right. I'm all for that. Yeah. See, I don't know how. Yeah. I don't think we actually get credit like like for uh, monetizing, like with advertising for Stanhope's site. But uh, you know, it's still you it's, can, it's getting out there. If you have a Google account associated with it, you can uh, you can monetize the the channel and get and get paid through it. Yeah, we do that. But uh, actually, when it's when it comes to advertising dollars for not certainly not for Near the Wild, but for uh, Doug's site. Uh, Doug's podcast, it, uh, it basically is, uh, downloads. It is, yeah, YouTube, I think YouTube, if you monetize it, it's about 20,000 views equals about a dollar. Oh, cool. Um, that's, that's what I heard. We did the Bill Burr puppet thing, and that thing, uh, like in the first week was 20,000 downloads or views. That's a dollar. Yeah. Yeah. It's a dollar. <laughs> dollar in your pocket right there. Yeah, and then gonna... you buy a lot of ticket with it. And yeah. You know, it's $480 million. Definitely reinvest it. Oh, uh, by the way, speaking of Lotto, the Ninana Ice Classic completed. Yeah. We never talked about it. It was uh, back on uh, April 23rd. We, have we talked about it on the podcast before? The, yeah, we, we talked have, about the classic, but not, not, the, not the win. Not this year's. Yeah. Not the current win. Yeah, that's uh, $300,000 split 44 ways. 44 people hit the, the exact I know. Is that, that's what amazes me. Is they get it has to be the minute they need to add the seconds. Well, this was this was weird. This is the second highest number of uh, winners for the classic, and it was like a hundred years this year was their hundredth anniversary. So yeah, that is weird um, to split it that much because I mean you would think that that it would be spread out enough. I guess seconds, but I don't know, man. I don't think it's enough. I don't think there's there's a, that many like clumped winners that you'd have to do that. 44 people. 44 people. I mean, and they, so Down to the t- day, time, they have to pick, minute. they have to pick the day and the hour and the minute. Yep. And 44 people. That's incredible. It was, uh, April 23rd at 3.39 PM this year. How many, how many people enter? That's what this story doesn't say is like out of how many well, people? $2.50. And then I think it's a split the pot. So. Divided by three hundred thousand. So, no, that's it. No, that's split the pot is six hundred thousand. Yeah. So so do that math really quick. So someone who has five hundred thousand people. Yeah. Uh, three hundred thousand. Three hundred thousand dollars split forty four ways equals six thousand eight hundred eighteen dollars. And then you figure. I just did a quick math on on the what the tax federal tax would be on sixty eight hundred dollars and and de- it all depends on where you fall tax wise with what your own liability is but i just did 30 percent, so they're they're only walking away with uh four thousand seven hundred seventy three dollars that kind of sucks you know the bullshit part is they still do it and this is the problem i have with it is you have to write it all out on a card and you have to get your penmanship right but then also the people ha- manually put it in the computer. Yeah. So that might be where the 44, if there's a lot of the same last names on the 44 <laughs> yeah. and they're all the same as the person who key strokes it in. Yeah. 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 I think uh, it might it, be a coincidence. It's my well, cousin, man. It's my cousin. So the last line in the, uh, the Associated Press story says in uh, 1973, there were 58 winning tickets. 
Yeah, that's and, and it probably was nowhere close to three hundred thousand dollars. I mean, they probably got their fucking their entry money back. <laughs> I yeah. mean, back back then. Yeah. That was pre pipeline, right? Seventy. So for anybody, yeah. So for anybody who wasn't listening to our last podcast where we talked about the ice classic, the ice classic, there's a tripod in the middle of the uh, Nanana River, which freezes over, and there's a uh, a clock in the tripod. And so when the ice breaks and that tripod falls through and the clock stops, that's how they determine who the winner is. And it is the weirdest fucking raffle in the world, probably. But the, I know. Uh, I, set out, that, I set out those green lasers trying to melt the ice. It took forever. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the, the tripod can like can really be displaced and it still not pulled the pin from the clock. So it, it yeah, is. Last year, didn't it like nearly like did it fall like nearly all the way in? Yeah, it was like way was over, and it still hadn't pulled out, and that's that's it. Yeah. And the money, where does the money? I think the money just goes to this to Nanana, the little the town. Well, yeah, yeah, it should to maintain that clock. <laughs> Actually, to pay people to make sure no one's pointing green lasers at the at the ice. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody Are you rules. kidding me? It cost us three hundred and fifty thousand dollars in security to make sure no one fucked with the thing. I, I was always going to get some like explosives from uh, the internet and just bury it underwater in the spring, and then wait, and then just detonate it or float it down, like, go up river. Yeah, like the earliest date ever, and boom, the clock <laughs> just blows in the air. One winner, a Matt yeah. Belcher. Oh, sorry, was- void. <laughs> <laughs> Forty-four people picked the exact same. <laughs> Like, God All damn it! Nana. That would be that would be a hell of an operation because you have to not only like get some underwater explosives to like float down the river, but then you have to detonate it at the exact minute when it is God, under the. I, I got, got all just, these bitcoins. I got to use them before they go bad. <laughs> I'm just saying that would be impressive. Is- like if you did that work, you would deserve to win. Well, the the the, the trickiest thing to to figure out and plot is how to not get your semi submersible bomb from from tripping up and getting caught on some of the other bombs that have not made it. Yeah. <laughs> They're all sitting there blocking the Nanana River. You're probably going to need to use uh, your winnings for your legal defense <laughs> fund after ordering explosives from the internet. Yeah, but there's no way they'll convict you. You're the guy who predicted the earliest Nanana Ice Classic ever. There's no uh, way. Yeah, you're you famous. Know. You're famous. You're like Palin. <laughs> Oh man. Um so my favorite news my favorite news story uh that I saw this morning uh was uh, you know the show Antique Roadshow? Yeah, with uh Wahlberg. So, with Wahlberg. Yeah, uh, Danny Wahlberg or one of the, one of the Wahlbergs is uh is the host of that, the new one. I did I did not know that. Oh. But apparently so uh some guy brought in a uh, an ugly face jug, which is a piece of pottery that's a jug with ugly faces on it. Yeah. And the expert the expert, uh, they set a value of it of fifty thousand dollars, and he was stoked because he got it for a couple hundred bucks at a at a barn sale or something. And then uh, a couple months later, uh, they found out that it was actually some uh, high school student made it back in the seventies, and it is worth uh, considerably less. Yeah, but, but I mean, is... all of those are basically they're just guesses. Nothing, no, no one's going to offer you fifty thousand dollars because you stepped away from that table. They're saying best circumstances in an auction situation, of which the auction house is going to collect money on that as well. That's not to rain, on, like, not well, to rain been... on your parade, John, of making ugly face jugs and uh, and moving them throughout the country. <laughs> well, no, it's the expert who's like, I've been doing this a long time, yeah. and this is one of the best specimens I've ever seen. I put it in like early 19th century, made on the East Coast, and it was made in like a high school in Oregon. Yeah, but here's the deal. Kneeling Hitler just got $17 million. Oh, that's right. That uh, that art piece of uh, Hitler kneeling and like praying to God or something. And now's a good time to bring this up. I think there's money laundering going on in the art community. <laughs> where they're no, because this is what they were doing in China in uh, Macau. They were uh, basically buying expensive artwork and shipping over to the U.S. And then once it got here, they resold it for whatever they get. Yeah. And that way, the money would go from China to the U.S. in the form of a painting. Yeah. That's that. That's classic yeah. money laundering. Yeah, and no one's watching because they're too busy watching offshore accounts now. Thanks. Yeah, Macau is is a is a real. Uh, that's a that's a sketchy little island there. There's a lot of shit going on there. Now now this art scam. No. Redialing. 
Hello? <laughs> hey, Hello? Three, three's a charm, guys. <laughs> I was should... listening to it on YouTube and it just dropped. <laughs> Let's just change the format of the show so we just do like five or six intros every episode. Yeah. All right. We need to get this moving now because we don't know how much longer we have. <laughs> yeah. Get, get it all out. Uh, so the horse race. Anybody better on Kentucky Derby? No, but nope. I did. I did see the fights with the white preppy kids <laughs> on the infield. Yeah, that was weird, <laughs> huh? I mean, no, no one's rooting for white preppy kids in khaki shorts. Sperry top siders and and blue blazers when there's a fight yeah. in the infield. No no one's rooting or or feeling sorry for anyone there. Well, you know they all got dental, so <laughs> who cares? Uh. So so did you did you uh, participate in the, the watching of the race? I did, I did, I enjoyed every year, and I I I might fly down next year for it. Really? Yeah. But this year was that horrible – the horrible scenario is the wire-to-wire wire with the favorite. And when they do it, you just go, oh, that sucked because I had a 30-to-1 I was betting on. What's a wire-to-wire wire with the favorite? What does that mean? In other words, he was already favored. They go, he's probably going to win it. He's probably going to win it. And then he wins it, and you go, oh, that sucked because <laughs> before – I mean, I bet on a 50-to-1 once, and I made money on that. Bird of mine or whatever when that thing – and I just knew it. And so this one, a friend of mine, Tom, was going down to – he goes, on a whim, I'm going to the Kentucky Derby. I go, all right, put money on it. So I looked up the horses, and it says, Tom's ready. Oh, wow. So it's 30 to 1. So I go, yeah, put put, put 100 bucks down. Well, and if you – if you, sorry. No, Tom wasn't ready. <laughs> <laughs> 12, 12 is what I got. If you go next year, you should bring uh, Unu, the artificial intelligence robot that bet the top four horses and got him right. But in order? Did you? Yeah, did you read about that? No. <laughs> they made it. It would have turned a twenty dollar bet into uh, almost eleven thousand dollars. But a hundred dollar bet. Yeah, yeah. Wow. See, that's great. I thought it was weird. It was sponsored by Yum Yum, which is part of Taco Bell. What K- else? Uh, KFC. It? Taco Bell Kentucky Fried yeah. Chicken and uh, Pizza Hut. Pizza Hut. Yeah. I thought that was a weird sponsor for a, a thing with horses <laughs> in it because we already are suspicious. That's some good taco meat. <laughs> that's it. Remember, the winners get flowers. The losers get rolled in it. <laughs> A little incentive to whip your horse a little harder. <laughs> well, the meat's really tough. You know, it's how it's how they keep the horses real lean and light. They feed them Taco Bell and they get diarrhea for a couple of days beforehand. <laughs> how do you keep the weight off? I eat at these brands. My uh, my birth mom Judith, her uh, her husband had uh, tons of stories. He worked in the uh, he still works in the horse race industry in San Francisco, and he 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 uh, was an agent for the jockeys to get these guys on the horses. So he was always down in the, at the paddocks early in the morning while they're doing their, their warm-ups and, and, and the training. <clears throat> and he's trying to get his jockeys on the horses that, that uh, he thinks are going to be good because that's all, they all share in that prize money. And he has fucking wild stories of back in the 70s of uh, them blowing shit right up into the, 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 the horse's nostrils right before the race and tons of, tons of drugs. Yeah, it was fucking crazy. Mm. It's like a Russian athlete. So everyone's all hopped up. But completely legal. Oh, yeah. Animal lovers. <laughs> <laughs> so this this yeah. uh, this horse race robot or the horse race betting robot that that's second to a, a sex robot because there's money there. So did they yeah. make money on it? Did they bet? Did the did the, no. hor- did the did the horse race robot go up and go? I'd like to place a hundred <laughs> <laughs> win place show for Tom's. Ready. You know what you do. It's what got one do? of those weird. It's got one of those like weird plastic robot faces that tries to show emotion to make it look kind of nervous. <laughs> what you do is next year you put an app out that's five dollars and it's the robot app, <laughs> and everybody buys it. Yeah, trying to get the horses, and they go, "Oh, I guess it didn't work this time." Sorry. Just call it the Uno uh, horse race app. <laughs> horse race app. Tom Hanks, get on that horse race app. Becker, you talked uh, earlier about the. Uh, hold on, John. Uh, we got cut off when Becker said something about the the Tom Hanks Rider app. Yeah, Hanks Rider. So, H A N X Rider. It's the Hanks Rider, and it's a it turns your iPad into an old time typewriter. Yeah, and he said he <laughs> click of the keys. It, it it looks awesome. No, it's amazing. Yeah. I use it, and it's so fun. I mean, you forget that 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 sound of typing goes, and it keeps you just you go crazy. It's good. We had a we had someone come by. The store we have a store down on a storefront that you know it's not open to the public, but it's where we we uh, have all the merchandise for uh, Doug Stanhope. And uh, 
above it is uh it's 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 a it's a um, almost a block long and it's an old old building and we're on the street level and above us is uh, I want to say probably 20 um crazy people living in one bedroom apartments and uh they one of them came down and sees Tracy in there, you know, stuffing envelopes and sending stuff out and dropped off a uh, a typed resume in two parts where he says how crazy he is, but that he will work under the table. <laughs> and I, re- I was looking at this paper. I'm like, I was very impressed. This was all typed. There's there's no correction ink, but it was it, I hadn't seen a typed sheet of paper in a long time. Hmm. No, it's great. I mean, that's says. But do you, you have a, Do you own a typewriter? I do own a typewriter. But you own I, one or two of everything. Yeah, but the old typewriter, that's the old one where the keys stick if you go too fast. Yeah, yeah. They jam up, that, like three stick yeah, together. That's what took so long to get a book out. <laughs> like people go, hey, I wrote six books. You go, yeah, well, the keys kept sticking together. <laughs> you, Greg, it's your lucky day because you can actually get typewriters on Amazon. I don't want a typewriter. I don't even want the, to hire the guy that, that gave me a typewritten thing. <laughs> <laughs> a resume. But where where are you going to be after Y2K and you're not able to, you know, write out invoices for people anymore? You're going to want the Royal Epoch portable manual typewriter. John. It's classic black typewriter. Full. We Don't bring race into this. I I uh, I already have it covered. I will have extra sheets in the pink leopard print uh, journal books. That I don't use uh, on the short tours. Problem solved. And we dropped again. So, redialing. Oh, you, oh shit, I had the sleep bus I was going to talk about. Oh, you, talk about it. The sleep bus is, uh, d- did you guys read about that? Uh-uh. Oh, sleep bus. Uh, this, this guy, Why I said talk about it? This guy, this guy dropped all his money to uh, create a, uh, a, uh, an overnight trip. From uh, Los Angeles to San Francisco, uh, the introductory price. It's. Do you remember the movie The Big Bus, where they had a bowling alley and they had a swimming pool? It was a, 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 a transcontinental bus, and it was a it was a movie, a blockbuster, not a blockbuster. But it, was a, it was a goofy movie. Six Canada. Rotten Tomatoes is not a blockbuster. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, if it got six, then I can't believe it doubled. Uh, but uh, this this that's what it reminded me of it when I saw it. That's why I read about it. But the sleep bus is this guy. It's a seven hour trip. You uh, board the bus at 11 p.m. and uh, you get into San Francisco at 6 a.m. It's only their introductory price is $48. That's cheaper than a motel, a, a, a safe motel. And you could be up in San Francisco and then spend the day and then come back the next day, right? I love it. Yeah. And 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 when you get there at 6 a 6 a.m. in San Francisco, uh, you don't have to get off the bus right away. You can actually hang out for. Uh, like an hour and a half. They they don't kick you off until seven thirty, and th- you're in like you're like in these <laughs> late these, checkout. Yeah, late checkout. Yeah, like to, uh, it's a it's like a pod that you're like sleeping in. You've got a internet connection, a power, um, and a little sleeping area. Now I'm looking at pictures of it now. It looks really nice. Also, looks like it'll start to smell real funny around it, like it's four not a.m. Going to st- sleeping in there. It's not going to stay nice. That's the thing. No, yeah. it's going to end up uh, the opium bus. Yes, every <laughs> every every bus. The lot. Every bus looked really nice, like before bus people started riding in it. Yeah. <laughs> if you could keep the people <laughs> off the bus, it'd be great. Uh, I'm such a shitty elitist, like fucking bus people ruining all our buses. No, but that sounds great. I would fly down there just to go to San well, Francisco. I do it. I go back and forth and just go, hey, you want dim sum? Let's go to fucking San Francisco tomorrow. We'll get, we'll meet at 11 o'clock and then head on down to the, I mean, the worst part would be if you had to actually wait at a bus station because those that is the fucking, that's almost, that's prison without bars. But if you if you get you could do that and go enjoy some uh, some a day in San Francisco and then get on the bus and come back. I think it's brilliant. I love that. But I, it, what's the what's a train cost? Uh, considerably considerably more than that. Considerably more than that. Yeah. Trains. I I, I once tried to take a uh, bus from Eugene, Oregon, down to L.A. and I made it as far as Sacramento, <laughs> where I just had to like. Get off the bus, get in a cab, and be like, take me to the train station because I can't handle this fucking Greyhound anymore. It was awful. And I was at the Sacramento bus station, like, looking around, like, why is everybody wearing the same gray sweatsuit (laughs) 
what is going on? And then, like, I was, like, waiting in line to get food, and then a guy, like, pulled out an envelope full of cash to, like, pay for his food. I was like, oh, everybody here just got out of prison. Yeah, yeah, that's that's the, the, the quickest, the fastest way to get out of town is that Sacramento uh, bus station terminal. Yeah, and it was a bus. A bus is just a way better way to travel, man. It's uh... see, I haven't slept in years, bus. Yeah, <laughs> but the the train travel is for people who don't want to show ID or have warrants or or muling drugs. I mean, this is this is definitely this is a a gray area. Uh, train travel, and it's really weird leaving from uh, Seattle down, going into Portland, and then down into California. The, the, but the train lines are really weird because they're, they're not owned by Amtrak. The lines are actually owned by the people that run the freight and they have priority. So if you start running behind, you can wait. And, and that, that same thing up in uh, Canada, we, we had to wait, uh, almost a, like 12 hours one time because one of the lines went wow. down. So it, it is one of those things where it's, it's a, it's a fabulous way. It reminds you of the, uh, the, 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 the stylish way of travel back, back in a different era. Yeah, until but you so get, hang on. It, until you get fed up, <laughs> and you yeah, get off. Yeah, but hang on now. So, like, if I go on with the wife, can we share a sleep pod? I don't know. That's a good point. Because I mean, I don't want to be laying there and have two people humping and pumping above me. That's this true. That's true. Like I just got out of jail again. Unless you get a peephole. <laughs> yeah. How much to watch? <laughs> yeah, well, I don't. I don't know. But uh, if if I if I had the time to to kill to do that, I would do it early on rather than later. Because, like I said. Those aren't going to stay nice for very long. I just did the research. If anybody wants to take the train, it's fifty nine dollars each way. Oh, that's not bad. Yeah, oh, but, but that's just a for a seat. Pod. But that's not yeah, for a, it's a seat. That's just a seat, and that seat means you got someone kicking the seat behind you, or like my last train trip from uh, L.A. Union Station to uh, Benson here in in Arizona, with a guy in the middle of the night standing up, going, "Who fucking smells like ass?" It just oh, that's then, not that's definitely not going to happen on a bus. Oh no, that that happened on a train, <laughs> and then you have to go back thinking this maniac is across the aisle from me. What the fuck? And it's probably him. Me thinks thou <laughs> protest too much, my friend. Uh, I don't know. I just a bus bed. I mean, hotel beds are bad enough. You get then you got a bus bed. I don't want to sleep in that thing. Well, the beauty is if if the bus rolls, you'll be crushed instantly because you're almost long, you're almost being crushed. How long has it been out? Because I want to get it in the first, you know. It's just starting. before the bed bug season starts. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's just starting before right it now. It smells like ganja, and a guy with stringy hair goes, "You want any?" There was a bus that would go. I think it, it, it from the east coast or the Midwest, and it would travel in the northern part of uh of the of North America across to Seattle, and I think it was the Green Tortoise. I'm trying to remember. I think that's the name of it. it was the green tortoise. And it was like a, it was like, Hey, when does the bus get, you buy a ticket. When does the bus get? And it's like, they give you kind of like a day that it's going to be there, but they don't, they can't tell you a time actually. And then when it got, and then when it got into Seattle, it was, it was just off of a uh, fifth and it was, it was, there was a uh, hotel that was in connection with them. And it was right down there in the, in the middle of the dregs. Hey, how about hookers working the bus? Yeah, all she has to do is rent one of the rooms, right? She's going cabin to cabin, yeah, boom, 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 up and down. Next thing you know, it's like, wow, that bus was forty-eight bucks, but I think I spent like a thousand. <laughs> I spent a thousand. Yeah, that's a, um, that's a good point. You just set up shop, right? Just the awkwardness, though. When you're done, she's not getting off the bus. <laughs> so you're just sitting there going, "Yeah, it was kind of quick. Sorry." So where are you from? L.A.? Yeah. Okay, going to San Francisco? Cool. Uh, well, if, well, see she, you again. If she's smart. The other thing. If she's smart, okay. she's doing a, uh, she's got, also she's got snacks and after hours uh, cocktails. And wigs and coke in her bra. <laughs> uh, I like the bus. Let's take the bus. <laughs> I mean, $48 is a good deal. Uh, considering like, you know, you're going to find lots of great stuff in the bed, like used needles. Uh, Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi. You get Wi-Fi so you could actually do a live sex show right from the bus. Ooh. Then you're making money. You're basically paying for the bus ride. This is goddamn. We're getting on the bus. <laughs> I don't know, man. Hey, a green tortoise is still a thing. It's connected with a, a hostel, in uh, a youth hostel in Seattle and San Francisco. Green tortoise But their, awesome. their website is completely broken. I, I can't figure out costs because I'm trying to figure out what it would cost to, to, to go to San Francisco from Seattle. 
Well, how funny, maybe while you're waiting for the bus, because like you said, waiting at the bus station is the miserable part. Yeah, yeah. But just sit there in a limo, waiting, drinking <laughs> champagne until the bus starts. They go, are we boarding yet? Well, let me know. Just come knock on the window. Let me know. I want to get my bus hooker first. <laughs> I spent 160 bucks on a limo to go to the bus. <laughs> we'll try it one more time. Redialing. Hello. Hello. <laughs> hey, welcome to Near the Wild. I'm Matt Becker sitting on a bus in Anchorage, Alaska. <laughs> I'm John Norris. I would tell you where I am, but we only have eight minutes before this call drops, so let's get to it. And I'm Greg Shaley. In biz- That's where it dropped. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Let's just throw content out. Right? <laughs> <laughs> just start everyone. <laughs> We'll split it up. I'll uh, put it on separate channels. Uh, John, you were talking about the typewriter, but and then you sent me a link while we were down real quick there. Uh, the Which problem went through perfectly. <laughs> Wait, yeah, <laughs> the the uh, the texting's working fine. It's the skyping that's not. Uh, the problem with those typewriters. That's a new typewriter. Who the fuck is making new typewriters? I don't know. Somebody in China. No, good for them. And it's got the double, you can get the double ribbon so you can do red. I used to remember that when I typed. You could always hit the button and have it go red so you could make words in red. Why would you want a red <laughs> word? Yeah, uh, just, we, you know, Greg, you're typing a letter and you want to type in murder. You don't want to do that in black <laughs> like everything else. You want to do it in red. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, but to tell you the attention deficit I had when I was a kid, I would write these stories. And when I'd write the story, I'd add a second story, like words in with just red letters in it. So then if you held it up, you could look at just the red letters and get a different thing. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. It was brilliant. Like a secret, The stories were shit. Like, but like a the, secret code. Yeah. yeah, it yeah. Was like, well, it wasn't that <laughs> secret. It was always secret if you were colorblind. <laughs> well, we've dropped uh, four times on this call. I have no idea how much time we've actually done. I've, I've uh, got lots of little notes here. Um, let's dive into content. Yeah. Actually, just, uh, Becker, you got anything? How about that? Uh, we got, uh, uh, Canada, Canada's trying to claim the North pole. Yeah. How can you do that? I, apparently if you're Canada, you go, well, you know, we don't have wood anymore because we burned up. (laughs) Well, there's no wood up there either in the Arctic. There's nothing. No, but they, yeah, they're trying to claim Canada or they're trying to claim it's minerals, the Arctic and I've seen Bering Sea gold. There's plenty of gold up there. You know what? We've been we've been sleeping on Canada. You know, we we think they're our friends, but then they try to make these power moves when we're all distracted with uh, elections and whatever. They're not our friends. They Never. want to cater our wedding. That's all they want. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Take that out of the equation. They stop coming over. Yeah. Have you have you have you seen the movie Canadian Bacon? <laughs> have I seen it? I live by that movie. It's yeah. It's uh, such a great movie. What, uh, tell John me about Candy. It. I was going to say, it sounded like the, wasn't it one of his last, no, the last one was out west or something. Uh, yeah. What's, it's, uh. Give me the rundown on Canadian bacon. I don't want to confuse it here. Uh, let me see. Let me make sure I got <laughs> this right. Have you seen it done? Yeah, John. Uh, I have, but it's been a while. I'm, and I, I try to look up the IMDb, but it's showing me a Michael Moore movie. So I'm wondering, is it actually called Canadian bacon? I thought it was. Why is my. IMDb keeps showing me this Michael Moore movie called Canadian Bacon, which I don't know what that is. Well, maybe they paid more. Maybe you should just watch it and get it over with. Yeah. Hold on. Let me just watch. Let me just watch this real quick. Just give me a sec. But uh, yeah, no, I, uh, I, all Canadian movies are. Uh, you don't hear about a ton of Canadian. You, they're, they're actors and they're comedians. All come down here and steal our jobs, but you never hear about them making a really good movie, do you? Uh, well, I knows, mean. Man. <laughs> movies are all made in Vancouver now. So I guess but what I, movie? Tell me a great movie that they made with Canadian that Canada made. Um, I don't know. There's Degrassi Junior High. That was a great TV show. That's TV. That's not a movie. That's not well, a movie. John. But they have a great Canadian broadcasting system. Okay, it's so great that they can't make a movie. <laughs> they make they make made for TV movies. That's the uh, what? What would Burning okay. Bed would Degrassi? Okay. <laughs> Yeah, I just that's I just Drake, I think it's that's amazing. where Drake came from. Where what? The the rapper, rapper. Drake. He, he starred in uh, Degrassi, and now he's a superstar. Who? So America stole him, if that's possible. Yeah, no, I mean, I just, I just think Drake? it's weird. You just don't hear about it too much, and I, you think they would? I mean, you think they'd make like Woody Allen movies or something? I'm sure there's somebody. It's like you know, regional. They just make regional. They don't make it to the U.S. 
too underground. Because if they're good, they would just come go to Hollywood and make money. No, that's what they do, though. They just come down here and go, I think I'm good enough to leave. But they still have those Canadian roots. Kids in the Hall, brain candy, Canadian No, I'm roots. not saying that. Yeah, no, but they all came to the U.S. and made those things. Yeah, they don't live in Canada anymore. Oh. Uh, John, I did find out about uh, Canadian bacon. That's the actual yeah, last. The president. That's the last movie um, that released that John Candy was in. I, it looks like <clears throat> the last one was going to be Wagons East, but uh, Canadian Bacon comes in actually a year after he died. Oh. They Both. knew it was so good they saved it for last. <laughs> like like, like, does, the, like I, sitting on Teen Wolf because they heard Back to the Future was going to be so hot. Uh, uh, it does have a 14% Rotten Tomatoes rating, so. Is that good or bad? I don't know how to read Rotten Tomatoes. Yeah, I don't know. You, you have to inform me on that because you told me one day the Rotten Tomato thing on that movie I hated, and I wasn't sure if it was good or bad. <laughs> Uh, fourteen percent is terrible. So the higher the, the rating, you want more tomatoes. <laughs> yeah, you want a higher percentage of rotten tomatoes. It doesn't make sense. Why would you want more rotten tomatoes? Um, after you get to fifty, it becomes fresh. Oh, then it's a then it's a fresh tomato. <laughs> oh, that's I don't even understand the scoring on this thing. <laughs> yeah. This is you know Kentucky Derby. Not to go back on that, but <laughs> you know this is the first year they turned the horseshoe up because it was always down. I don't know what that is. What are you talking about? They, the horseshoe. They have a horseshoe on the Kentucky Derby. And it, everyone knows an upside-down horseshoe, the luck falls out, right? Yeah, yeah. It's like a, like a cup. So it Kentucky spills Derby, out. All the years they've done this, they had it upside down. And finally, they protested and said, we need to turn it up, right? Set up. So it's rigged. Yeah. So what <laughs> did anything change? Yeah, there was a big fist fight on the infield with, with Brett yeah, McKinnis. I, mean, <laughs> I just thought it was weird. I go, you know, you've been doing this how many years? You're going to... Beggar's horse it. came in 12th. That's what happened. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, guys. <laughs> Fucking with tradition. Uh, now the lucky get luckier. Good for you. <laughs> but yeah. So I don't, uh, but yeah, I don't, uh, I understand with, with a lot of the, uh, the, the, the movie reviews and stuff now. It seems like they're prepaid. Movies I've never seen get bad reviews. I haven't even seen any movies that talk about movies. Uh, BP, BP BP's cutting down their oil production. They're gonna cut it down some more, and then Shell's giving up their leases on the, the Chuck 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 G C leases. They're giving those up. So, so two, basically, what I'm trying to say is we're doomed. We're dead. So two years so, ago, when you gave the oil industry a huge, huge tax break, um, this is their thank you. Remember, remember, oh, because if if yep. they if you passed if if that proposition passed. To uh, increase their taxes or to uh, to to continue their taxation, uh, they were going to be uh, so fucked that they would have to get get rid of jobs, and so yeah. they didn't pass. Uh, they, they received huge tax breaks, and yeah. what happened? Uh, well, get this: uh, the <laughs> legislators are trying to figure out what to do now that they're playing hardball with them, and their their lobbyists are all going. Uh, the money's drying up. You might as well just close your offshore account. Yeah, offshore drilling isn't as big as offshore betting on these politicians i think mm. so they're currently they can't figure out a budget for alaska because we don't know what the current day's oil price is yeah so we're fucked i mean we're fucked so bad up here no one's no one's really acknowledging it because they haven't done anything but i go we're gonna pretty much go back to one supermarket it'll be good we'll, well be everybody's fine. everybody's gonna leave and so one supermarket will be fine yeah That's probably more than enough and the odds will be way better for the nanana ice classic next year oh i bet <laughs> yeah, yeah. The one guy running it, one yeah. guy betting on it. Uh, it'll probably be, it'll probably be sometime in June, and then that guy will win. That'll be the <laughs> correct answer. I hate to say it, but yeah, it'll probably be like a six hundred dollar prize pool, and and the paper will list it as life changing money. <laughs> you know, a real a real Alaskan would donate that money to the government too, so they can yeah. fix some some potholes. Oh, you guys are gonna do some donating pretty soon with your PFD. No, that's there's a. The, you know, a smart man would have an exit strategy in this town. And <laughs> a smart man yeah. does. Yeah, the, I got uh, a lot of money. I'm just not giving it to the uh, the current problems we're having. Come, come on, Becker. You they they are going to dip into the PFD. You know that, right? No, I know they're going to. Yeah, well, they're, they're going to try. Remember, they can't really do it, but they they're well, saying they're going. To. They're they're going to. They've been, I mean, come on, fucking politicians. Anytime there's there's a there's a bank of money Greg, somewhere. When I moved up here, I said because they talked about doing a one time payout and just taking it. Yeah, and I said I'll be like that that uh, Dr. Seuss movie with the where he puts his stars on the bellies and takes them off. I'll have one like fucking 
U-Haul trailer with hookers in it. I have one with coke, <laughs> and then I'll have. And we legalize pot, so that's fucked. Yeah. And then uh, so now and then one with just money, and I'll just keep throwing money in it. And then I just drive down the Alcan in an RV, and there'll just be money flying out the whole way down. That that used to be when I was up there playing in the early '90s. There were still vestiges of that time in Soldatna and Kenai where you would drive down the road and all of a sudden there'd be a clearing off the side of the two lane highway heading down to Homer. And there would be basically one, three, three, uh, mobile homes. One of them was clearly a bar and the other two were definitely, uh, little, uh, little shacks to uh, hook up in. And, and it was a strip club in the middle of nowhere. Just right off the road, and I don't know. I don't know if they were ever open or they were just abandoned or whatever. But uh, yeah, the, that that was a good time. Alaska definitely had a, a had a run there. You know, sex trafficking, another industry the uh, government couldn't keep going in the state. <laughs> I don't know if it was as much trafficking as it was availability, because they still got what's that one down down in Soldatna? Good time, Charlie. Good time, Charlie's. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think it's is it might still be open. Oh, it's but. still there. Uh, Steve Holt from Thirty Six Crazy Fist just uh, tweeted this morning. Ah, home again because they were pa- they were passing it. Uh, I don't know where they were coming from. But, but he didn't stop, did he? No, nobody. No, stops. see, the last two times when I buy it, I go, we need to stop, and then nobody. Whoa, whoa, we'll go on the way back. I go, no, you have to go to these places. Are they fucking closed? That's how they close. Heart? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, go to Burger King instead, you fat fuck. <laughs> We would get done at uh, Larry's Club, which is uh, just right in at the Soldatna Airport in that area, just just off the highway a little bit. And uh, we would get done at, I don't fucking know, like 3 in the morning, and we would rush over, find someone to drive us to the highway to go to Good Time Charlie's for a couple more drinks because there's, there's always a reason to keep going, right? And I it was never, it was never a place like you knew, ah, oh, I'm so glad I'm here. It was like... Let's get the fuck out of here. At, at four in the morning is not really a good time to be at this a seedy fucking uh, strip club. But it was always – it's very interesting that that place has always been able to stay open and, and, because that was the place that had the, the booths with the hand jobs and the pornos playing 24-7 on the, on the big screen. Not a fancy big screen. I have nothing screen. but great memories. I, I'm, they, I, great I'm memories. glad I went. I'm glad I went. But I, I don't remember uh, – it ever being one of those like that was the best decision I ever made because <laughs> oh, then we ended up my, ha- we ended up having uh, to try and get home after that. Someone well, would you leave. Know that Becky, Becky and I, we stop on the way. I mean, it's like yeah, it's, yeah. you can go into their wife. They they're so respectful. They were like, oh, they would ask uh, her if you know, is it okay if he has a dance or whatever? And yeah. she goes, yeah, go ahead, whatever. I don't care. And uh, but it was just that cool. Where is this? It was like a hometown bar with strippers in it. They I do, weren't the best. Yes, and I do agree with you that if you don't if you don't go to those places uh, around the corner that you drive by for the past fifteen years, if you don't walk in there once in a while and throw them some money, that that's that's how those places go out of business. Yeah, that's what I, I said I, about that's what I said about Chili's, and you know they're uh, gone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but they're at the airport, which is a great time to eat food that Chili. might cause diarrhea. <laughs> Chili's to go. <laughs> John, this is where you jump in with something amazing. I had something good, but then I then I lost it. Yeah. This is why you oh, need a journal. Having, this is why you need a journal. <laughs> we're having beautiful weather. Anchorage is officially uh, global warmed. Um, we're supposed to have 70 all week, which is – we should technically still have snow on the ground. We're, we're at, having 70. We're at 80 today, and I'm actually – after I'm done with the podcast here, I'm heading over to the pool – and uh, starting up the filter and getting everything running. It's it's now clear water. <laughs> it was pretty green for a while, but uh, yeah, everything's good to go. We're gonna have we'll probably will, have triple digits this weekend here in in uh, Bisbee. We're coming down for the fourth. So get ready. Yeah, yeah. We now have uh, baseball back in Bisbee. Uh, the Tucson Saguaros, when they have a home stand, they will play their Sunday game of a home stand here at Warren Ballpark in Bisbee. That is going to be great. I'm trying to decide who I'm going to make my baseball team, the Anchorage Glacier Pilots or the Anchorage Bucks. I'm leaning Always towards go the Bucks. Bucks. Always Bucks. Wait, yeah. uh, isn't one of them a Fairbanks team? No, they're both Anchorage. Fairbanks is the Gold Panners? Yeah, Gold Panners. Mm. Very good, John. So we got to go to a game, John. We got to. Yeah, go. I'm excited to go to games. I like going to games at Mulcahy. 
I went they have to a lot of Tuesday games. I went to one once when they were trying to do a Fourth of July simulcast music to the uh, fireworks display, and I was I was with the radio station. And it was the biggest abortion that I've ever been a part of. It was fucking crazy. <laughs> because, I mean, it was light, all right? We all know that. Yeah. That's the biggest joke about fireworks is that it was light and it was cloudy. And, yeah, it was in nothing. I, I, don't, I never understood the simulcast anyway. You, you really need to heighten the, uh, the fireworks with music. Watch it at home if you want that. That that you can control, or link it link it up later with the video. Yeah, yeah. Can't you just can't you just put like headphones in and play whatever music you want? You can. You can simulcast it yourself, everyone. Yeah. And we dropped again. So redialing. Hello, you're listening to another episode of Near the Wild. You're sitting on a bus in Anchorage, Alaska. <laughs> ha! All right. I don't. We were talking about. Uh, Baseball and fireworks and uh, yeah, America, America. Oh, did you see that? Oh, Budweiser. Budweiser, <laughs> Budweiser changed their name to America what? now that they're foreign owned. What are you talking about? Uh, Budweiser until until the election's over. Budweiser announced that they're gonna uh, change the name on the cans and bottles from Budweiser to America because we're finally and... gonna try and make America great again. For real, and I mean, no, we're it... gonna try to make Budweiser great. <laughs> You know, it took it took Budweiser being bought by a uh, Belgian company to to make it more American. America, I know. Yeah. But the best part is we throw our cans and we're done in the fire pit. And I don't know if you can do that now. Oh yeah, red, white, and blue. <laughs> Old glory. Uh, I mean, I I I'll drink Budweiser, but I'll also drink anything. Uh, I don't think I'm more likely to drink it now that uh, now that it represents my home. What what is the logic behind changing the name? It's the weirdest thing I've ever seen. Now that we all know you're foreign owned, you got rid of the Clydesdales, and now you're going to call it America. Going, have you hit rock bottom? Are you about to close? They're they're killing jobs. Those Clydesdales oh, the, are out of work. The point was to have some news stories written about it, and to have uh you know shitty podcast hosts talk about it. <laughs> and <laughs> mission accomplished. Yeah. In Bev, they did it. They succeeded. I just, yeah, I thought it was the weirdest marketing thing I've ever heard released. And they're like, yeah, but, you know, it's coming and we're going to do it till the election. <laughs> you mean until the riots? <laughs> I mean, come on, who cares? It's just, I don't, I'll, I'll look at the, the label on a can because I'll, I'll tend to reach for a light beer rather than a, a craft beer or something just because I can drink more. And that, that, that it doesn't matter to me. Who the fuck cares? Is, is it going to well, be? Well, no, I think that the next headline you're going to see is America pulling out of America. <laughs> America didn't work. Back to the drawing board. Cuba. <laughs> Macau. <laughs> the champagne of sake. <laughs> oh, I drink. That's a good. That's not a bad name. I would drink that. See? Because it's champagne or because it's sake? Oh, it sounds worldly and like <laughs> celebrating. It's a pinky lifter. A pinky sure. lifter. I don't like sake. I, I've tried. I've, I've drank a lot of it, but it uh, cold or hot. Uh, I've had it both. Yeah. Uh, I prefer cold, Ugh. but I don't hey, know. My, it just tastes. It just tastes like water that they soaked rice in. Like, hey, my booze expert. What was that thing I bought at Le, Lo Bodega? Lo, 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 Los Lobos liquor store uh, at La Bodega. Her? The the was it the the jelly sake? Yeah, that was amazing. Oh. It's like, yeah, it's, it's like the most amazing thing I've ever had. Sparkling sake with a uh, peach peach jelly in it, and it's like it's basically like delicious boogers that you're drinking. <laughs> this very young looking twenty one year old girl, when we were waiting to uh, depart, she came up and went, "Hey, can I try that?" And I'm like, "Yeah," because I'd already tried it, and she did it, and this jelly blob goes in your mouth like it came in your mouth. She, she, I, she totally looked like Becker just, like, fucking tricked her into drinking snot. <laughs> <laughs> she looked at me, like, what the fuck? I go, I know, I said the same thing. But you, she asked closer for it. Than a gar- you were closer than a garbage can. That's why I gave it to you. <laughs> Sorry, I've, you know, I've had a cold the last couple of days. I should have warned you. Oh, my God, that was horrendous. Oh. And yet amazing. I'm going to go it find it. It's delicious. I'm going to have it on stock just it, when people come over. It is good. 
Yeah, it's delicious, man. And it's called Jelly Saki? No, oh, it's called uh, what's it called? It's uh it's made by Ozeki. Oh uh, uh no, we're calling that Detroit now. <laughs> Detroit should buy Ozeki. Uh, here it is. I, I'll, I'll send you the link. To All the right, product thank you very much. I'll put a link up so everyone can. No, know, you got to try it, out. Greg. If you can't find it there, I will ship it to you. All right. Because you have to try it. It's amazing. You've listened to another episode of Near the Wild. I'm Matt Becker, sitting in a bus in Anchorage, Alaska. And I'm John Norris, sitting in a beautiful townhome owned by my <laughs> girlfriend in Anchorage, Alaska. And I'm Greg Shaley, reaching for another delicious booger. In a nice little cup. Oh, wait. I'm in Bisbee, Arizona, too. It's 80 degrees. I'm headed to the pool. Don't forget sunscreen. You've been listening to the Near the Wild podcast with Matt Becker and John Norris, recorded in Anchorage, Alaska on Matt Becker's Backyard Bus, engineered by me, Greg Shaley. dialing.